Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew continues teaching from the life-changing Word of God about making sense. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today's the last day of a two-week special uh, group of programs that we have made with Paul Milligan, the CEO of my ministry. He's also a very prosperous man that has had many corporations and, and uh, thousands and thousands of employees. He's had uh, his corporations, I think, over 200 million a year is their income. And he now runs our business school. He also runs our ministry. And for two weeks, we've just been talking about how God wants to prosper you. And typically, most ministers, myself included, just talk about giving and how you trust God. And when you put God first, then He'll add all of these other things to you. And that is absolute, absolutely true. I'm not diminishing that at all. But I think I heard you say this, uh, that how many people have given 10% and yet aren't any better off financially? That's only part of the equation. You also have to manage your money. And the way that the world is approaching managing their money today is completely unbiblical. There are scriptures that says, Oh, no man, anything. The borrower is servant to the lender. It's a curse if you are in debt. Deuteronomy 28 and on and on we could go. And so this is why I brought Paul on is because he teaches all of these management type of things, stewardship over the other 90% beyond just what you give to the Lord. And so we've been talking about that. If you've missed any of these programs, today is our last day that we're going to be dealing with this. And Paul has this software that he's put together. And I tell you, it's amazing. This week we have been showing this on our screen and showing you how you can list all of your assets, all of your debts and everything. And then you can put in different amounts, how much you can squeeze out and Click a button and it'll tell you exactly how long it takes you to get out of debt. It'll show you with a green bar or a yellow bar or a red bar where you stand on a daily basis. It's just a tremendous, tremendous tool. And so anyway, we've already covered, I think, the majority of everything that we were wanting to cover. One thing we were talking about off camera was that if a person uh, doesn't have enough income to be able to uh, take like a total 10% in this illustration. If this is your first day, some of this may not make sense, but we were using a person had $5,600 uh, left. Is that right? Yeah. $5,600 after, after uh, ties and taxes. Ties and taxes. You call it EAT, E A T T. Right. Earnings after ties and taxes. Yeah. So if you had that much left, but you didn't have enough to be able to start paying down exactly what you needed. How, how would you do this? Would you just devote everything 100% to getting out of debt or do you put any money into savings? What would you suggest? The reason I suggest that you split it into savings and debt is because the Word of God is very, very clear that God commands a blessing on, what, on your storehouse. That's and Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. It's also Levit Leviticus 25 and, and yeah, some other a lot, of lot of places. But anyway, the point is that that it, God says it's there. He commands a blessing on your storehouse. Well, if you don't have one, you've not given God anything to bless. So uh, paying your debt down is extremely important. But I believe you've got to have a storehouse so God can bless it. So the question always, because I've had so many people ask me this, well, I can't do 10% because we're recommending the, in the program you do 10% uh, uh, paying your debt off. When you start with that fast track amount, remember we talked about the fast track fund, 10% of the 5,600. So you start with 560 to help pay your debt down and you save 560. Well, obviously some people are going to say, there's no way I can't do that. Well, if you got 200, then take a portion of that and pay and save it and take, and take the rest of that and pay it down on debt. And so what I would suggest you doing is, is the savings should be the lesser because you really need to put as much as, po as you possibly can against that debt to pay it down. And then what I really would like to encourage people, we've talked about this on the programs, but I want, kind of want to summarize this, is that if you just look at the natural math, this will always look impossible to you. If, if, if you're going to do that, I'm, I can assure you, you're going to get discouraged. What, what we're talking about here is once you start taking steps towards stewardship, then God gets involved. 
and things get accelerated and your income increases when God sees you're going to be a good steward. You know, you, there's no better example to me than your life. Because, you know, when I came in 1996, basically the ministry was bankrupt. I mean, I'm it was not, in bad shape. I'm not condemning you. No, I'm just, it was in bad I'm shape. just saying it was in My bad shape. My board of directors, I think this was yeah. before you came on. They told they me told one time, says, you are bankrupt. And they were going to close me down. And it took a miracle. We were sitting there praying, and I said, please don't close me down. What are we going to do? And my mother called. She's the one that opened the mail. Yes, yes. And we got a $60,000 $60, yeah. uh, check in the mail that pulled us out of the deal. But it took a miracle every day. You know, but you know, your, yours is a ministry, but you know, the same thing has happened to you in your own personal finances. You're a very prosperous man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not, look, I want people to understand, that's not because you pay yourself some huge salary. I mean, there, if you go in and study the size of this organization, you're very underpaid. But you've done the right things with your money. You've been a good steward. And I know, I know this because we're good friends and you've told me some things. But here's the point I want to make. Your ministry, when I showed up, was broke, mm -hmm. right? Literally within three years, well, I'll say this, by 2002, this ministry had more than doubled. Every, oh, probably tripled. I, I, I'm dying well, to go back and We look. doubled from 2000 to 2002. So from 1996 when yeah. you first came, I'm not sure, but it was It probably, could be three times as probably much. Probably four or five four. times. Uh, and so the point I want to make is that in the natural, I guarantee if we went back to 1996 and we were looking at numbers like we're sitting here doing with this, n there's no way you could have gotten where you were at four or five years later. Not in the natural. You know, I was just looking at some of our stats. I was just praising God over what He's done. And I went back and looked, and in, two, in 1999, our income was less than $2 million. And so uh, in 2016, it was, what, $63 million. $63.5 million. So from 99 to 2016, what is that, 17 years? Yeah. Uh, we've gone up over 30 times. And a lot of it is because of these principles and just doing things in a consistent way. And you hearing from God and us doing exactly what God said. I mean, there's the difficult thing for me sometimes with finances is, is that you get focused on the financial numbers and money. And there's so much more to it. There's relationship with God. There's obedience to God. There's doing, you know, pursuing the will of God, pursuing the kingdom of God, all these things we've talked about. And those spiritual things are much more important to me than what, than these things we're talking about. Well, this here. really is a spiritual thing. We're talking about all of the physical things that you need to do, but it really comes back to a spiritual thing. If a person's heart isn't right, you know, if they are, if they're wanting to prosper so that they can just go out here and blow it so that they can start I don't know, having multiple mistresses or, or anything like that, it's going to compromise the entire thing. You aren't yes. going to get God involved in those things. Right. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money itself is not evil, but the love of money is the root of all evil. And if a person's heart isn't right, if the reason they're wanting to prosper is so that they can just empower them to go do whatever lust they want, you aren't going to get God involved. I'll tell you in something. That. I honestly believe what I'm about to say, but some people may argue with me. If a man's heart is not right about money, then it's God's love for you and His grace to keep it from you. Because I honestly believe that money is a magnifier. It's amoral. That's right. It's a magnifier. Whatever's in your heart, money will magnify. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's, when I find people who are prosperous, because I have a lot of friends who are, pro that's the one thing I see. I can, I can tell you what, just by looking at their life, whether their heart's right or not, where money's concerned because it just magnifies whatever's in your heart. So the decision to change your thinking and change your heart is the most important part of this process because it puts you on a track for God to be able to bless you. And, and, and His grace will just, it, prosperity will be used for the right. You know, you, we say this often, but, but whatever people don't understand the true purpose of, and when I say true purpose, I mean God's purpose. Yep. Whatever you, you don't understand God's purpose for, you will abuse. Mm -hmm. Even whether you intend to or not, you'll still abuse it. And the purpose of money isn't to get a bigger house, a bigger car, or any of that stuff. It's to, bl it's to empower you to do what God's called you to do. A verse that we've quoted a number of times, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, But God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. That's the purpose of money right there. It's to enable you to abound unto every good work. It's not to meet all of your needs. Our needs ought to be a byproduct. 
And I know that you live this way, and I do too, Paul, but I don't ever pray about my needs. No. I bet you it has, it's been decades since I've asked God to give me any money. Yes. I don't ever pray about my needs. The only thing I pray about is, God, I want to build your kingdom, and I want to go out, and I will pray about how can I reach out and how can I do things, and in order to do that, I need money. But I don't ever pray about myself. Because I thought you're living Matthew 6, 33. Absolutely. Seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all, you know, all these things will be added to you. But, and go look at that scripture in context. I'm encouraging the people because here's what all these things are, needs. It's, it's what you wear, what you eat. What, you know, that's what he's talking about in that verse. And this is why I said early on in the programs that the way I look at Scripture, the way I deal with my own needs in my own life, it's my pursuit of the kingdom. I never have a thought about, I know this sounds crazy to people, I never think about needs. I don't have I don't them. either. I just don't, I'm not trying to be arrogant about that. I don't have We're just any blessed. Needs, right? I'm just so blessed. So what I'm concentrating on, I'm past that point of need. I'm looking at what now, every, all the income that God's blessed me with is money to give. Yep. Wherever He says to give it, wherever he, whatever He says to do with it. Did you know it was 20 something years ago that I had a prophecy come to me that I would not have to sit down and evaluate what God wants me to do by how much money I had. And that I would get to a place to where I would just want to hear, God, what do you want me to do? And I would never consider the finances. And at the time that prophecy was given, like that's impossible because my whole life was structured around how much money I had. I could only go on so many radio stations or TV or whatever. And my whole life was limited by money. But when I started changing my attitude, you, uh, you know this because you've been on my board for 15 years, but when we finally got this property up in Woodland Park and we began to start designing the buildings for a year and a half, I talked with the builder, with the architects, and we just decided what we wanted. And I never one time asked them, how much is this going to cost? I just said, God, what do you want me to do? And money was not the deciding factor. And we actually had the plans already drawn up. We had spent, I'm not even sure, but I, th I think it's over a million something dollars on the plans, plans. the architectural yeah. plans. And I'd already spent all of this money and was committed to this before I ever asked them, how yeah. much is this whole thing going to cost? You know, what, what, that is I've awesome. seen you do that. I've seen you do that on, on, on several things. And there's no way to over, over, uh, overblow the importance of making decisions without regard to money. You know, what, every year I go into the business class during orientation and I'll ask the students, I'll say, if I ask you what's the greatest barrier that you see in the future to starting your business, you know what, 90% of them will say money. I'd say more than 90, I would suspect. I, and that, if I, they'll raise their hands. I mean, that, they're, and here's what, I, here's what I say to them. How many of you have heard Andrew's teaching that money's the least thing in the kingdom of God? How is it that the least thing in the kingdom of God is your greatest barrier to where God wants you to go? That's a good point. I said, how is that possible? Because it's not true. It's a it's the it's the blinding that and it's, it is the culture and the way we've lived. I I don't even look at money that that way anymore. It, you know, when you said to me, God spoke to you that you were going to own that 336 acres of that building that belonged to Andrew Womack Ministries. I never questioned, it never became an issue with me. I didn't doubt it. I knew you'd heard from God. This was not when we bought the property. This was four years ago. Mm -hmm. You and I went into a meeting that just stalemated. We couldn't get anywhere. And we walked out of that meeting and you turned around and looked at me and you said, I know we couldn't get it done. Doesn't look like it's possible, but God spoke to me and said, that's ours. And so that becomes the determining factor for me. We didn't have the 20 some odd million dollars to buy that. It's never even been a it's consideration. It's what God says instead of what the banker says. Exactly. Man, isn't that awesome? It's That's awesome. a great way to live. Well, now let me, let me just add some balance to this. Are, are we saying then that you don't even consider money? You just go out and buy the most expensive thing or whatever? No, the, no, the, the, the determining factor is you gotta hear from God. What was important about that with you was you'd heard from God. You know, you, you remember, I, I don't know if you remember this or not, but when I first came on, we asked you to set the goal for the number of new partners you wanted. You come back and told me 10,000. I don't know if you remember me saying this now, but I said, because it looked impossible because it took you 38 years to get to 17, 18,000 partners. Mm -hmm. And now you want 10,000 in a year. And so what I said to you was, if you tell me, because I know you, you hear from God. If you tell me you heard that from God, we'll do it. There's the difference between me, between possible and impossible, being, being rash, 
being unreasonable in, in, in what you expect. And this is what I've, I've taught to teach the business students this. I taught my own children this. Look, you can't get off out here. Believe, you can't believe God for everything that exists. What you can do is believe God for what He's told you. And another thing that I've learned over the years is uh, Mark chapter 4, I believe it's verse 28, where it's first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear. There's always steps and stages. And there may be some people watching us that say, for instance, are just barely off the street. They may be living in a really poor thing. And so all of a sudden they're going to start speaking that I've got a million dollar home. You aren't going to jump no. from there to that place. No. You don't accelerate from zero to a thousand miles an hour at one time without dying. It'll right. kill you. Right. you. There's steps. You have to accelerate. And so I, I don't, uh, I'm not trying to diminish anything that we've said, but it's not, you just don't pull these things out of the air. You know, these things that we're believing for, Paul, man, I've been in ministry now for 50 years and there has been a lot of steps in having to believe God for a thousand dollars and then ten thousand dollars. Now it's up into the millions. You know, I use you as an example with the business students. I, I make the point that, you know, if, if Andrew and Jamie, and let's just pick a date in 1976, if God had come to Andrew and said, you know, Andrew, it's going to take two billion dollars for you to accomplish what I've called you to do. I'm going to put that in the bank over here. But God, you know, you've got a great life ahead of you. You're going to accomplish your, uh, the pur my purpose for your life and your job, the whole thing, right? Here's, here, you know what? I probably would have never met you. I, I don't, th I think you could not have survived that because number one, there's no faith involved with that. And what, what is not a faith is sin. You would have got into sin. And I, Probably. And I'm not accusing you. No, but I mean, it's, I understand you, what you You probably saying. would have gone off into something that would have been sin in your life with God. You'd have wasted that too. But here's my definition of waste, not doing with money what God said yeah. to do with it. So, the, and my life is exactly the same. I'm so, in a way, I'm glad I had to, I had to be patient and gain wealth over time. I, I recently, I should have had some of these statistics. I started to. I recently studied this, the life of people who come into great inheritances, or, the, or, or lotteries or things like that, over 90% of them are destroyed by the money. I agree. I, they're, they're, there that. are now statistics. And that's one of the reasons that I was so resistant to the Lord about taking the limits off of Him and growing is because I saw the potential that success has for destroying you. Yes. And it's, it's uh, severe. You know, let me also say that if the Lord, um, like here's a, an example that there is this, um, organization now that starts churches and gives them like a hundred thousand dollars salary and pays their rent and it's and it's the concept is good. You hate to think that a person just goes out and struggles the way that I did to get started in ministry. But when I heard about this, I thought, how is this person that has everything just handed to them, how are they ever going to learn some of the lessons that I learned where you just had to sit and trust God? I don't think it's really healthy for you. And that's what you're saying. I, I don't either. It's like I, t I tell the business students, you need to make decisions in your life, especially where business is concerned, as though money were not an issue. But you, we just made this point, I'll make it again. But you can also get in the ditch on the other side by just saying, well, anything's possible, I can just do whatever I want to do, yeah. right? The balance is, the way that this has walked out is a word from God and then believe God for that and never any regard for whether money is good, bad, or indifferent in that situation. You just believe God for the outcome. And the word from God is going to be first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear. He's not going to show you to go from never having anything into this super abundance all at once. There is a growth process. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says that you will prove the good and the acceptable Simple and the perfect, perfect will of God. Yeah. And so if you are listening to us, you know, I wished we had just time to talk to you personally, but there is a balance to these things we're saying. You don't let money dictate you and restrict you, and yet at the same time you realize that there's a growth, and God's not going to give you money if you haven't proven yourself faithful already. Matter of fact, this is exactly the teaching that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 16, where He says, if you haven't been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, talking about money, who's going to commit to you the true riches? And He establishes there that you grow into these things. You have to prove yourself faithful. And if I hadn't have been faithful in 1996 when you came and taught me that one principle about just in time uh, inventory management, and if I hadn't have done that and have taken these steps, I couldn't be where I am today. And so it's going to be the same thing for every single person here. 
You know, let me add one other thing to it, that not only if the Lord had told me he had all this money set aside for me, but if the Lord had showed me back in 1976 that it was going to take a billion dollars to accomplish what I'm doing, I'd have run the other exactly. direction. Like, God, you got the wrong guy. Yeah. So I had to grow to where I could do this. You, you didn't have the faith to, 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 to be able to, to deal with that reference. You couldn't even deal with that. It, it would have decades. terrorized me or it would have done the other thing. I would have become so impatient knowing that this is where I was going and here's where I was living, where we were struggling to get by, that I would have become frustrated and quit. God is just going to show us things step by step. And I really believe that God has spoken to some people during these two weeks, Paul, and he's shown them some steps to do. And you may not have every single answer and you may not know exactly all the things that are going to happen, but if God has spoken to you and, and has shown you that you need to get out of debt, you just need to start taking those first steps and heading in that direction. And then as we've tried to say a number of times during this thing, God will get involved in this. If you will do what you can do and take these steps, then God will supernaturally energize it. And you know, you could, you could go to the Bible and use a million of examples. You know, the Lord said He was going to deliver the promised land to the children of Israel, but did that mean that they just walked in? It was all on a, on a platter? No, man, they had to go fight battles, but God supernaturally prospered them. He even said in Deuteronomy chapter 7, I'm going to give you the land little by little so that the beast won't increase Increases, and that right. the uh, fields won't be taken over by the weeds and things like this. He would give it to them as they were able to possess it. And it's the exact same thing. We've given you some tools and you know, uh, I'm, I've listened to some of this and there is much more than what we were able to share here on the television, but we've given you some tools. And if you would just start moving in that direction, I believe that God would supernaturally enable you. So we've got less than three minutes. Paul, your last well, I, you know, comments. When you were talking about that, it, it made me think about one of the things I always teach is, you know, overcoming is, is an important thing. Is the Word has a lot to say about it. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Revelation 3.21 that those that overcome will sit in His throne with you. So everybody wants to be an overcomer, but very few people want to overcome anything. <laughs> I mean, th this, let me tell you, it takes, it takes overcoming faith. Yeah, Joyce Meyer says that a, a testimony without a test is nothing but a money. It's a money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, I want people, I want to encourage people, look, don't, don't think some strange thing like the Bible talks about. The, why do you, the Word of God gets tested. And they've heard the Word in the last two weeks about this on these programs. And listen, the, uh, persecution and affliction come for the Word's sake. So, this is going to be tested in them. This is not going to be, not, I don't anybody, want anybody to think this is going to be easy, but it's doable. Amen. You got, with you God's absolutely, help. with God's grace and help, you can do this, and I want to see everybody on the other end of that. So let me mention that this is Paul's uh, material here. There's six hours worth of teaching, but then there's all of these uh, spreadsheets, I guess, is you call, anyway, software. The software that you can plug your material in, and it will get you out of debt including your mortgage, anything that you uh, owe on payments, it'll get you out of debt in seven years. Man, that is quite a statement. And then we've got my book, Financial Stewardship, that goes along with it. Today's our last day to offer this. And so I want you to listen to our announcer and please make a decision today. I think that this could make a huge difference and empower you to go ahead and do what God has called you to do. Listen and then call or write today. Since the filming of these programs, the Making Sense teachings on the USB drive have been updated. This update includes changing the name to Basic Sense. The updated Basic Sense financial teaching from Paul Milligan is available in audio and video teachings on a USB drive. When you order this teaching, you'll also receive instructions to register for six months of free access to the online money management program, also titled Basic Sense. The Basic Sense online money management program will help you eliminate debt, establish a spending plan, and develop a monthly spending report. With this tool, you can become debt-free, and most can experience financial freedom in just seven years. Make sense of your finances and contact us today to order Basic Sense for just $149. Or for just $20 more, you can get the Basic Sense package. 
This package includes the Basic Sense USB teaching with six months of free access to the Basic Sense online money management program, along with two of Andrew's books, Financial Stewardship and Living in God's Best, as well as Andrew's teaching titled, What's in Your Hand on CD and DVD. This package has a catalog value of $200.99, but you can get it today for just $169. Make sure to get the Basic Sense package when you contact us today. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner by visiting our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our number is 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'd just like to encourage you to pray about giving and helping us to complete the construction up in Woodland Park at the sanctuary. You know, between now and the end of the year, all of your gifts that you give will go on the 2017 tax year. And I'd just like to encourage you to participate and give and become a part of this. Your year-end giving could make a huge difference in what we're doing. We are about nine million away from having our auditorium completely finished, but we just need your help. So pray about it. I encourage you to join us and you will be blessed by the Lord a hundredfold in this life. The construction at Karis Bible College is all about transforming lives, developing leaders, and changing the world. You can give a tax-deductible year-end gift by going to awmi.net or calling 719-635-1111. Thank you for caring about the message of God's unconditional love and grace. I know that many of you have heard these testimonies about how God is changing people's lives through Caris and you would love to be a part of it, but you just can't come. Well, I want to let you know that we have distance education and you can go online and you can take our online courses or you can get correspondence courses where these will be sent directly to you. So check it out, our Karis distance education. You can be a part of the Karis experience. True Christianity isn't about what you do to make God move. True Christianity is all a response to what God has already provided. It's already a done deal. Amen. His message of grace, his message of faith um, has been absolutely life changing for me. Grace has spoken to you and says you are clean. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you are my righteousness. Faith responds and says, thank you. I receive my cleansing. Encounter the gospel truth with Andrew Womack and Jeremy Pearsons at the Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference, January 4th through 6th, 2018. For more information, visit our website or call 719-635-1111.